One of my favorite scenes in Blood Meridian takes place at the start of the novel. And the kid enters a revival tent. And there is this preacher, Reverend Green, and he is delivering a sermon that is moving the crowd. And this man, who is Judge Holden, stands up and he says, Everyone, do you guys know that this man right here is wanted in three states for committing sexual acts with not just an 11-year-old girl, but with a goat? And as he's walking out, gunfire is erupting and the tent is falling down. And I'm assuming that they are killing Reverend Green. Well, Reverend Green isn't some made-up man. He was was actually a preacher on the circuit in the exact area and year that this scene took place in Blood Meridian. And McCarthy, with making Reverend Green a real person, went full sweat and meta mode. And I'm assuming that he already thought up the scene and then needed to find someone to fit the mold. So where do we go to find a man to fit the mold? Well, McCarthy went to J.S. Newman's The History of Primitive Baptists in Texas, Oklahoma, and Indian Country. And in that text, it says, quote, in Elder R.J. Green joined by letter in December 1938 and was excluded for drunkenness in February 1940. And this is on page 120, everybody. I mean, McCarthy didn't just go to the first page and find this. He had to find this random book. And the only other information we get about Reverend Green in this book is, quote, he affiliated almost exclusively with the anti-missionaries, but before long, he appears to have become a moral wreck, resulting, it was said, from some sort of domestic trouble. And so obviously people, especially repressed preachers who are alcoholics, have a higher probability of engaging in weird sexual acts. But we know the judge, when they all get back to the bar, says, I've never met that man in my life. I don't know anything about him. And I think this scene is important for the story because, first of all, it just shows the trickster energy of the judge. When the judge is saying all this, the Reverend Green does speak some truth when he says, and not to just go full Reddit bro dumbass on you guys, he says, there he is, there's the devil. I should get on Reddit right now, even though I'm banned from the Cormac McCarthy subreddit, and ask, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Is Judge Holden? And so how do we take this scene? Well, first of all, the judge may just be projecting, doing a classical case of projection of his own sexual, what could we call it, kinks, problems, onto the reverend. We obviously know that he engages in pedophilia and God knows what else. However, when I first read this, like my intuition, before, before you know anything about the judge, is that men are just gullible, especially with these people who are being revivalists. This is a theme throughout McCarthy's work. We see this in Sutri. There's like a revivalism, revival baptism going on, I think an outer dark also. And McCarthy's uh, language and tone makes fun of these people because McCarthy is a uh, highbrow Catholic. I mean, he went to Catholic school and his father was a lawyer. His brothers was a lawyer. His sisters went to elite uh, schools in the Northeast. He obviously thinks that the wacky Christians are a joke. And of course, it could just be the judge being a troll. I mean, this really sets up the connection between him and the kid and helps us move into his character. And this is something that he does again and again, even to the point of killing and attacking his own men. You know, the Yuma scene was probably planned by the judge. Obviously, everything that happens between him and the kid also. So what are your thoughts about the revival tent scene in Blood Meridian? What do you think the purpose of that being in there is? Do you think it builds the judge's character in a certain way? Or is it just a quick pot shot at the revivalist by McCarthy 